With the ability to sleep for easily towable by an SUV coming in at only 3,600 pounds and beautifully appointed is the all new Heartland Mallard Pathfinder P16 SRD. All right, folks, so we are in the brand new Pathfinder from Mallard. Again, this is the P16 SRD. One of the things you will notice is that the lights are a little dim and they are flickering. I apologize, our battery pack is running low. So although there is quite a bit to cover in this little guy, we do have to go through a little bit more quickly or else we're not gonna have any light to show this. So uh, let's jump right into it in the kitchen. There's definitely some things they did here that I really like. One of them, of course, is the countertop. You don't have T-mold. So many manufacturers are going away from it, and I'm so glad they followed suit in that. You have like the pressed laminate countertop, so you have less chance for water intrusion, plus you're not gonna have tea mold that's gonna pop off around the corner. The sink, I really like. Uh, so they went with a, a, a round sink instead of square, and I think it was kind of wise, because it gives you a little bit of additional space right in here, right? So if you have something a little bit bigger, uh, you kind of can utilize this middle area as prep space, or if you have like soap, you wanna put it back here in the corner, something like that, um, you can do that. They get the sink top cover, so you can utilize that as prep space, as well as, of course, the recessed cooktop. But the sink itself is a nice, deep bowl, so you can fit some of your bigger pots and pans down in there. And it is a metal bowl, which honestly took me by surprise. I fully expected them to put in a composite one. Uh, I like that they upgraded a little bit. I really like the color of the bowl, too. It's almost like a gunmetal. Um, it's just really pretty in my mind. You'll also see the kind of high-rise uh, oil rub bronze faucet right there. So again, you know, you have good space between the countertop and the faucet. So even if you have, you know, like a, even a stock pot, you can probably put in there and still be able to uh, wash it out, which is pretty impressive. Over next to that, as I mentioned, is the, our cooktop. It is a two burner that's recessed, so you have the glass cover, so you can utilize that as prep space. Just kind of fold that up and back. Acts as your backsplash, because in lieu of a backsplash, they have put in a larger window, which uh, a lot more manufacturers are doing. So that way you get all of that natural light there uh, coming in. If we take a look down below, we can talk about some of the storage. So you have storage all the way down. Now you do have a little panel right there because you have a uh, P-trap and some other components there, some electrical components, but storage all the way around the rest as well as right next door. Open that up, you can see storage all down there. And they went with storage space in lieu of an oven, which I do think was a good choice in this layout. Great storage right up top. You can take a look there, right? You can certainly enjoy that. Um, I like the fact that one, they have hidden hinges so you can't see them, a little bit cleaner look. And speaking of clean, the handles on here are very clean as well. Nice kind of modern style handles there, very easy to use. You know, I, I don't feel like my fingers are gonna get stuck and they just, they function well. Uh, coming in a little bit further is the wardrobe. So you can see a good spot right there to hang your clothes. Down underneath you have a uh, set of three drawers. Now I'm probably not gonna put my underwear or socks in there, but you can certainly use that for flatware, uh, hand towels, you know, it's things that are gonna be a little bit more associated with the kitchen. And then in the very back is the dinette. And, and I personally like this dinette. Uh, I think they did a pretty good job. A couple of the things I like here, right? One of them is the fact that they wrapped this cushion all the way around. The reason I like that is because the TV, you wanna spin around, Sam, show them where the TV is, is all the way up front right there in the bedroom. And it's a great spot for it if you're laying in bed. But if you wanna utilize that back here, what you can do is you can put your feet up just like this, kind of turn around, and now I have a shot to the TV. So when that's angled here, I'm able to watch that, which uh, again, I think is, is pretty smart. Now, if I move back, right, as far as space, I can still easily sit four people at the dinette. This does drop down into additional sleeping space if you need uh, you know, a spot for guests to sleep. So you know, if, if it's just the two of you, great. If you have additional people, that works too. Um, as far as far as height, I think the table's at a pretty good height here too, right, for eating. I mean, maybe I could use it like an inch taller, maybe, but I honestly think it's pretty good. Uh, it's sturdy, you know, I mean, it wiggles a little bit, but I mean, I can put some weight on it, and I think they did a good job mounting it there. I, I have, I do have good space between my legs and the table, as well as my torso, plenty of room there. It's always one of the things I look at, uh, especially as the bigger I get in the torso, right, the more space I need. And um, this, def this one definitely provides that. 
window space, windows all the way around back here. It's one of my favorite things about this floor plan because this is really where you'll be spending the majority of time in this floor plan when you're inside, right? It's built, this one's built to take kind of out into the wilderness. So if you wanna go outside, you can, but if you're in here, you have all the windows all the way around. Uh, storage up top, you can see that there as well as storage here. I also like the window treatments. I think they did a good job. It's stylish without being overbearing and you don't have any like the side lambrequins on there. Um, and so it just kind of gives it a clean look overall. The thermostat is located right back here. Just so you know, this one does have an AC as well as a furnace. So uh, if you do have shore power or you know you have a portable generator or something you're bringing with you, you are able to run uh, the AC with that. If you're just running off your batteries and solar, then uh, of course AC wouldn't be an option, but you can still run fans. USB ports, if you need to plug in some electronics, you have USB ports on both sides of the dinette, which are great. Uh, and then moving back up a little bit further. So right here is our furnace, just so you know, direct vent furnace, uh, an RV this size, folks. That'll do a great job. It'll heat it up here in a hurry. And again, our 13.5K BTU AC is right there. This one does have the quick dump option to quickly cool things off, and, and it will be quick with, uh, again, a little bit shorter RV like this one is. Inside, drop-down freezer compartment, good fridge space right there. This one does run off both propane and electric and has automatic switchover. Microwave is right up top if you want a microwave. Let's hit the bathroom really quick. Uh, th that's Hold on, before we do, the only, the only thing I will say that it, I guess isn't necessarily my favorite about this uh, particular floor plan, it's just that it is a little bit tight right through here. Now, in my mind, it, it's worth the trade-off, right? And the reason it is tight through here is because this is a seven foot wide box. So I just wanna point that out. So this is the downside, a little bit tighter because it's a foot, uh, it's a foot less than what most of your RVs are, but with that, you get lighter weight, which is why we're able to tow this one with a, a midsize SUV with that 5,000 pound towing capacity, and you get less wind resistance. With, when, uh, and when you're towing with an SUV, tripping over my words here, when you're towing with an SUV, that is a big deal because you know, it tends to be a little bit um, narrower, right? not quite as wide as your trucks, and you know, they sit a little bit lower, so a lot of times you're getting a lot of wind on that front end if it's an eight foot wide trailer, but having seven foot does make it easier uh, to tow and easier to see around the sides as well, which can always be a concern. If we come into the bathroom, I think they did a good job here, folks. I, I have plenty of space. You know, uh, my legs and my knees aren't banging into anything. My shoulders are good because they did cut out the countertop right here. You'll see that extends over to the side. Um, you have this guy, you know, a little spot for toothbrushes here. Um, not sure what you're going to put in there. Maybe a cup if it's... Uh, I don't know, but you have that guy there too. Um, so, you know, do with it what you want. You can see you have an electrical outlet right next to it, access to plumbing underneath, plus a little bit of storage, right? Maybe a good spot to put some extra toilet paper or black tank chemical. Of course, you have this here for that same purpose. And then for the shower, because this is always a big one, take a look folks, at six foot tall, I can stand in the center of the shower. This is not a huge deal when you're talking about bigger RVs because, you know, they, they have a little more weight. They can afford the extra head height. When you're talking about RVs under 5,000 pounds, this is something that's a little bit tougher to accomplish. But they have done it, and I can stand up in here. I might be able to be 6'1 and not have to duck down. If you're any taller, chances are you will. But, you know, if you're, again, at that 6-foot range, you're good. The other thing I want to point out is the actual size of the shower itself. I can fully turn here, and even if the curtain were to be dropped... I can actually turn around in this shower. And again, for an RV this size, this is something you don't see very often. So I really love that they have put in a bigger shower than you normally get. Mirrored medicine cabinet right up top. Um, you will see, you know, the sink is fairly wide here and then you have the, a little dirty. Got the oil rub bronze faucet right there too. Taking a quick look up front. This is another place where I think they excelled. You wanna talk about nailing it when you're talking about RVs. This is another one. This is a 60 by 80 residential queen size bed. I wanna emphasize that again. You are under 5,000 pounds. You have a large shower and you get a full 60 by 80 residential size bed, which is 
awesome when you're talking about a smaller trailer. Up top, you have a shelf, and they put these little bungees in there just to kind of help, you know, retain anything from falling forward. If it's heavy, folks, th these aren't going to stop it, right? I mean, you can see they're bungees. They're, they're going to flex. But if it's like clothes or something like that, maybe some extra jeans, sweatshirts, things are a little bit bulkier, not super heavy, they'll hold it just fine. Windows on both sides, TV we talked about earlier, and again, that is on a swing arm mount, so that can flip uh, right around. The connections for it, of course, are right up top there. And if you take a look at this wall, you will see your, um, I believe your solar controller is there, as well as your electrical outlet, USB port, and a little net, so you have a spot to put the phone. Uh, last couple things I do want to touch on, right over here is your multimedia center. So uh, one of the things, um, you know, we'll see this one, is Bluetooth capable? Of course, this controls the speakers in here as well as outside. And you notice it has an HDMI port and you can see in the back of this TV, right here, you have some cables. They've already run it for you. So if you have some auxiliary equipment you wanna plug in there, you can. Um, you, know, you don't have a super great spot to, to set it. You may have to set it like right here or something. But you know, if you want to have a movie night, a little bit of setup, you can make that happen. Last couple things I want to touch on before we go outside. This is something that is super simple, but man, does it make me happy. Got a little bottle opener right there. If I just need to reach in, crack a bottle, maybe I'm in here. Um, you know, sometimes it's the small things I really enjoy. And then right down here is our control panel. Uh, you'll see everything you need there from your uh, water pump as well as water heater, all of your lights. And this one has a battery disconnect. Your tank monitoring panel is located there too. Oh, one more thing I almost forgot to mention, <laughs> drawer space. I don't know how I forgot this. Very important, drawers. Take a look at that, right? You got two up top, you got two big ones right down underneath. So not only do you have that large wardrobe we saw in the back, but you have drawer space right here under the bed. Now that we've seen the insides, take a look at some of the outside features of the 2021 Heartland Mallard Pathfinder P16 SRD. Right up front, you'll notice this one does come standard with a power tongue jack, making connecting and disconnecting from your tow vehicle much easier. You will also see right behind that are your two 20-pound propane tanks with a tank cover, uh, as well as our rails for the battery there, diamond plating on the front, and our nice big battery pack that we replaced it with. As you can see, that guy's nice and full. We are good now. Day late, a dollar short, but uh, we have a new pack for today. So <laughs> making our way back. Couple, of, couple of quick things. You will see two of these, and this is a, a spot to uh, latch a pet, right? So if you have dogs or anything that are coming with you, you'll have one up here, one in the back. That we don't have to worry about bringing a stake, especially if you're on like a concrete pad. That does make life a little easier for you. Coming back a little further, a nice big storage compartment door. I love having a large door. This does utilize the key alike system, meaning that this is a unique key, not a 751. If you don't know what that means. Uh, years past, every pass-through storage compartment would use the exact same key, meaning that to open yours, that same key would open your neighbors. Well, people or RV manufacturers started to realize that is a safety concern because you don't want your stuff stolen. So they have gone to the key-alike system, which is great. That way your stuff will be protected. Magnetic catch right up top. And if we take a look inside this big pass-through, you will see we have plenty of room. Couple quick things. Uh, I misspoke when I was inside, so your solar controller is out here, which is where I would kind of expect it to be. Uh, and inside is our control for our inverter. So we can see this one has a, uh, I'm going to guess, 1000 watt pure sine wave inverter. We'll see when we get over there. I'm pretty sure that's what it has, um, which most likely will charge or will power two outlets inside, right? One in the bedroom, one uh, probably in the main living area. Um, I, I can verify which ones those are, but more than likely that will power two outlets. A couple of quick things up here, you will see, boop, you have a rail of LED lights there, so lights up your pass through space, and you have the tire link system, which is uh, essentially a TPMS, right? Tire pressure monitoring system, which can be awesome, especially if you're taking this uh, a little bit more off-roading, right? You wanna make sure your tires are gonna be protected, and when we take a look at those, I mean, you can see they're, they're beefy tires, right? I mean, they're 15 inch. They definitely have some girth on there, some nice, a little bit thicker lugs for the tread as well. But, you know, if you, if you start hitting rocks, other things, right, you just wanna make sure they don't go flat on you. Uh, having that system, having it prepped for it is great. Um, so that way you can just buy the unit, plug it in, you're good to go, it's already prepped. The wiring is already done for you. Taking a look up top, power awning with LED light strip on there, a couple outside speakers as well. Those are tied to that multimedia center inside. You'll see this one does have the Wineguard Air 360 Plus, 
which will give you the 4G LTE capabilities. That way, if you want internet basically everywhere you go, uh, you can upgrade to that. Now that does have a cost that is associated with it, a monthly cost, because essentially you are going through a cellular carrier to have that. Construction-wise, this one uses Asdell composite panels. So behind this fiberglass is that Asdell in the place of Luon. A couple big things there, folks. One of them is weight, right? As I said, they have to do a couple things in order to get this light enough to be towed by that mid-size SUV, and one of them is going to Asdell. Now, it is more expensive, of course, because it has nothing but benefits otherwise, right? It's lighter weight. It doesn't have any off-gassing like sometimes you will get with Luon so that if you're sensitive to smells, it won't affect you. And it will almost completely prevent delamination, which is those bubbles you sometimes see in the sidewalls of laminated units. So big benefits to the Asdell there. If you take a look underneath, you can kind of see it. Maybe I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but there is a blue light right there. I like that because if you're coming or going at night, especially if you had a few cocktails uh, like myself, you don't trip over the stairs. Whether you're going in the RV, out the RV, you can see what you're doing. Aluminum treads there as well, which don't rust, and you have some uh, extra grip, so if it's wet, you don't slip and fall, plus you have the larger grab handle making that easier to get in and out of the RV. We talked about the big old beefy wheel there. You can see it again. Again, as I mentioned, that does give you a little more ground clearance, raises that RV up a little bit there. Potable water connection will be right here. If you plan on doing some boondocking, you want to make sure you have water. That will is the place to fill the fresh water tank, electrical outlet, cable outlet, in case you want TV outside. Uh, but again, remember, you will have to most likely have shore power, generator power to run that outlet. Now, when we talk about water, one other thing I do want to mention, if we take a look underneath, a couple of things to talk about. One, the fresh tank is enclosed, right? The other tanks, come up here with me a second, Sam. If we take a look up here, you will see, oh, well, did I get that backwards? I don't know, you can see the tank right over there. So you can see your black and gray tanks are, ex they are exposed, right? They are not um, covered by that underbelly. Your fresh tank is covered, the other tanks are exposed, but all of the tanks have a 12 volt tank heater on there. So that will allow you to do some late season camping. Would I recommend camping in the winter in this? No, I wouldn't. Uh, they're gonna be covered. If you have cold winds sweeping through there, unless you skirt it, maybe. Uh, but again, that there's really no heat source other than that 12 volt uh, tank pad. I personally probably wouldn't do it in winter, but if you're talking late fall, early spring, where it just starts dipping below freezing, that tank heater will do everything you need. You'll be just fine. <clears throat> Another thing that um, I, I want to mention on the underbelly, uh, oh, I was like, what was it? But here it is, propane quick connect, right? So right there, if you have a grill or anything that you want to hook up, this one does have that quick connect, so you can pop it right in there, feed off your two 20-pound bottles up front instead of having to buy the little green one-pounders. I promise you there is another hookup and right there it is, or uh, another leash latch, if you will, a place to hook up your leash for your pup. Square tubular bumper with end caps, so you have a spot to store your sewer hose. And then the spare is an identical tire to what we have on it, which is good because as I said, it is a 15 inch, tar, uh, 15 inch tire, it's larger. It has more tread, bigger lugs. If it was a different tire, if it was a standard spare, it would be a very rough ride. So you do have an actual authentic true spare, which is good. Nice and easy to climb up onto the fully walkable roof. You can see the ladder. Now, uh, if we do get up there, we can see a solar panel. Let me see this thing, Sam. Here we go. I'm gonna get up there. I'm gonna show you guys. We have, whoo, one-handed baby, a solar panel ah, right up front. So if you can see that, you know what? I'll just climb up here. There you go. So right up front there, that is your solar panel. You can see that that is mounted. Everything else is up here. You can see your WineGuard Air 360 Plus right there, plus the Furion AC unit. So all in all, you will have some excellent things up on the roof. And again, it is still a fully walkable roof. Put me out of a job. Yeah, sorry. That was, that was harder than you think climbing up there one-handed. I don't recommend that. Ah, no, just kidding. All right, so make our way around to the side. 30 amp plug in right there. So if you have a 30 amp, or if you have a 30 amp, of course you have a 30 amp. That's what it comes with. But you just turn it right into there. That will plug in the post. What I meant to say is if you have a post, if you are at a campsite, you have shore power, that's where you have it. Cable and satellite will also plug right into there. Last couple things as we make our way up here. Black tank flush does come standard on this unit, which is awesome. Makes it super easy to wash out the black tank. City water inlet. Spray port right there, and this one did come with a hose, which seems silly, but in our times right now, the not all units are, right? We have some uh, supply chain issues. 
this particular unit did come with it. <laughs> that may not be the case, but just to let you know, this one did. You will see your uh, both your gray and black tank terminations are also right here. And this is important too. One of the things I do enjoy is the fact that this is higher, right? A lot of times manufacturers will have these lifted units with 15 inch tires and they drop them way down here. And I'm like, well, what is the point? You're just gonna rip your plumbing off if you hit something. But they did raise that up, which uh, I think was uh, a really good idea. So that way, hopefully you don't uh, have any damage or anything. As we come around to the other side, just wanted to show you inverter will be located right there at 1200 watt. So I, I apologize, that is a 1200 watt. Um, and I know that one is a pure sine wave. And if you're not familiar with what that means on the inverter, basically it just means that it is a clean inverted power. So if you plug in like a laptop or some other kind of electronic that's a little bit sensitive to the, the changes in that fluctuation in that power, you'll be fine with that one because it is clean power. Uh, there are some other ones out there that they're not pure sine wave and then they cause damage. Not the case here. You will be good to go. And folks, that will wrap up the 2021 all new Mallard Pathfinder P16SRD. If you're interested in this beauty and you would like price and availability, simply click on the link in the description. That wraps it up for me, folks. I'm Ian Baker. Thanks for watching, and let's go camping.